The world of deep sea creatures is full of mystery and wonder. But what exactly is the deep sea? Well, the deep sea consists of several different underwater zones in which abnormal fish live. These zones are classified by the distance they are from the surface. In general, it's classified as the aphotic zone, with the distance from the surface being 1000 meters and deeper. As the zone reaches farther away from the surface, accessible light diminishes into total darkness, reducing the amount of resources available. This results in strange yet horrifyingly amazing fish who have adapted and evolved to survive in these difficult living conditions. So with that explained, meet Colossi, a fine example of this phenomenon, their mother nature's spooky experiment with life. Colossi, aka the Colossal Squid, also goes by the Antarctic Squid and the Giant Cranch Squid. They live in the southern ocean near regions of the Antarctic, from the north of Antarctica to southern South America, southern South Africa, and the southern tip of New Zealand. Colossal squid are also seen near Cooperation Sea. The region between the Weddell Sea and the western Kerugalan Islands has also been deemed a hotspot for these guys. As for the ocean zone Colossi lives in, they actually spend their lifetimes going deeper down into the oceans as they age. Young squids are found in the deeper sunlight or twilight zone between 0 to 500 meters or 1,640 feet. Adolescent squid are found between the twilight and aphotic zone of 500 to 2,000 meters, 1,600 to 6,600 feet. And adult squid are found primarily within the deeper aphotic zone, which is why it's harder for us to find and see these larger, older ones. The colossal squid comes from a family of giant squids, and they're the biggest squids when it comes to mass. The giant squid, which is a different type of squid from the colossi, is certainly taller in height by a few meters in colossies, but the colossal squids are larger when it comes to weight and overall size. In fact, colossal squid are the largest invertebrates we know of to exist. But how big are they exactly? It's hard to get a perfect estimate due to how few we found, and there's wide debate about the maximum size they get, but based on the ones we've discovered and measured, it's safe to assume they're about 9 to 10 meters or 30-ish feet, and some sources suggest they're even bigger, reaching up to 40 feet. That's like a little more than two giraffes, or five six foot people, and that's only from the leftover parts that we found. Who knows how large the ones that never end up on the surface get? If it could stand and be right in front of you, you'd probably piss yourself, but you'd also see how tall it is, and that's really tall! They also weigh quite a bit. From the small amount of specimens obtained, larger sized squids can weigh up to 600 to 700 kilograms, or 1300 to 1500 pounds, about as much as a cow. But compared to the size of a cow, the squid is a titan. It might be hard to picture just how big this guy is, but let me put this into your mind. The size of their eyes is f***ing insane. Pardon my language, but my enthusiasm is deserved. Are you ready to hear just how big their freaking eyes are? 12 to 16 inches, 30 to 40 centimeters. The, that is so big. Bigger than your foot, bigger than Bigfoot foot. They have the large size out of any animal, including anime girls. <laughs> Their large eyes give them the advantage of detecting prey easily without having to actively hunt in the dark, fast sea. As for the size of their beaks, Colossi's beak is huge, about the size of a grown hand. They use their beaks to kill and dismember fish and other aquatic species of prey they feed on. They sever the spinal cord of their bony prey to paralyze them for easy feeding. The anatomy of a squid is pretty similar to the other smaller types that we know of that dwell in the ocean. They have their mantle for locomotion, one pair of gills, eight tentacles, two fins, and their head. Along with their freakishly monstrous size which makes them different from the other squids in their family, they also have little hooks on their arms and tentacles. These hooks are inside fleshy, muscular sheaths that attach to their arms. They can also turn these hooks 360 degrees in either direction. These squids most likely use these hooks to help with catching and restraining prey in the deep. They also use these hooks when they are being attacked by predators. Yeah, crazy something this big has a predator, but it's true. Speaking of prey, what kind of things do colossal squids eat? And how do they get them when they live deep in the aphotic zone where light isn't easily visible? Well, they're classified as an ambush predator. They find and capture prey through the use of bioluminescence. This is a common method for fish hunting in the aphotic zone. Many predators in the deep evolve to catch or lure their prey this way, including the anglerfish, viperfish, and other kinds of predatory fish. Thanks to Colossi's giant eyes, 
They can watch out for any potential movement in the dark without having to physically move too much. This is necessary for all living creatures in the deep zone, because conserving energy is one of the most important aspects of surviving in the environment. Their eyes essentially glow in the dark, and they can spot both prey and predator when they're using bioluminescence. When they spot potential prey, they ambush them quickly, using their giant fins to lunge forward towards them. Then they lower their arms and tentacles and shoot out their two two meter long tentacles to catch the victim. The rotating hooks on the end of its tentacle latch on the fish and stop it from escaping. Colossi typically feeds on mesopelagic fish, which live between 200 to 1000 meters deep. These types of fish are adapted to the low light environment. They typically have a black or red appearance to help them blend in with a darker environment, and they have light producing organs, rows of photophores that also help with hiding. Some other specific types of prey they also eat include Chaitonatha, a type of marine worm. They're also known to cannibalize each other at times. It sounds harsh, but kind of makes sense if you consider two reasons for them to do this. One, because food is food and they gotta eat something. And two, it gets rid of another potential rival when it comes to competing for food. Colossal squids also eat much larger fish species too, such as the Patagonian toothfish. And the Antarctic toothfish is another popular prey they consume, with a study in Antarctica finding that 71 out of 8,000 toothfish shows signs or marks of being attacked by a colossal squid. And these fish can get really big. The Patagonian toothfish can get 7.5 feet or 2.3 meters, and the Antarctic one can get 5.7 inches or 1.7 meters. With Colossi's vision, grip, and strength, these fish are a great source of food for them to survive in the ocean deep, but sometimes they put up a fight. Well, Colossi, that shares a lot of cool facts about you, huh? Is there any other important information you want to tell the viewers about yourself? Ah, of course, your old time rival and enemy, the sperm whale. How could we forget about them? That's right. Humans have widely discovered more about the colossal squid thanks to their ultimate enemy, the sperm whale. How big is the sperm whale compared to the colossal squid? Well, honestly, it's hard to say. It's hard to estimate just how big they are when it comes to the creature we don't have a lot of information on. Some sources say that sperm whales are vastly bigger than the squids are, getting 78 feet long compared to the 30 feet squids. While others are saying they're a similar size, Make up your damn mind, internet! Which one is bigger? We may never know the truth. But what we do know is that these whales are ruthless towards the colossal squid. They use their echolocation to determine where the squids are in the water, regardless of how dark it is in the deep sea. When they find them, an all-out battle breaks out. Sperm whale versus colossal squid. And unfortunately for Colossi, in most cases, the whale is the victor. We know this because the evidence is in their gut. Most of the colossal specimen we received have been found in the stomachs of sperm whales. 14% of the squid beaks found in their stomachs belong to the colossal squids. That means for whales in the Antarctic, these squid make up 77% of their biomass. Additionally, the whales' bodies tend to have scarring on their backs, most likely due to the hooks Colossi uses when they wrap around the whale and try to fight back. But poor, poor Colossi. The sperm whale isn't their only enemy. They also have to deal with beaked whales like the southern bottlenose whale, which reaches 7.5 meters or 25 feet. They basically look like a dolphin's uncle. Also, damn, he a lanky boy. But oh boy, there's even more predators that want to eat Colossi's big eyeballs. Southern elephant seals, Patagonian toothfish, southern sleeper sharks, Antarctic's toothfish, and albatrosses eat them too. However, beaks from mature adults have only been recovered from large predators like sperm whales and the sleeper sharks, while the other predators only eat the juveniles or young adults. So now that we've covered all the essential information we need to know about them, it's time for a little history lesson. A story of how the colossal squid first became discovered by humans. Let me take you back to a long, long time ago, in the winter of 1924 to 1925. During this time, a British zoologist named Guy Coburn Robson, also known as Mr. E. Hamilton, was investigating the whales of the South Shet Islands for the government of the Falkland Islands. 50 miles from the Smith Island inside the stomach of a sperm whale, he found leftover fragments of two large squids. The fragments consisted of two arm crowns, and Robson donated these parts to the zoological department of the British Museum. They were absolutely blown away by these parts. There were no other discovered squid like it, and the special movable hooks were the first they'd seen on a squid. In honor of the man who discovered it, the colossal squid was named Mesonichotuthis Hamiltoni, after E. Hamilton. 
The meso means middle, and onicho means claw, which describe the unique hooks Glossy had on their tentacles. Humans wouldn't find any more specimens or parts until 1956, when a man was investigating the diets of sperm whales in Antarctica. I. I. Agimushkin discovered several parts near the South Orkney Islands. This time, a head and mantle was found inside the stomach of a 15.8 meter long sperm whale. Additionally, he also discovered a fin in a different sperm whale measuring 15 meters long. At first, they misidentified them and thought these parts belonged to the giant squid rather than Colossi. This has happened a few times due to their similarities, but they sure are different kinds of squid. After that, a colossal squid specimen wouldn't be heard of again, until around 1970. This time, a juvenile specimen was found, with the mantle measuring 86 millimeters or 3.4 inches. The upper and lower beaks of the squid was described and illustrated, but it's not known who discovered this specimen. Simply put, Colossi was just not very popular. Hell, they still aren't considering how separate they are from our lives. But in 1970, scientific journals and the Russian branch of fisheries and marine began covering these squids more often due to their relationship to whales. From 1970 to 1980, there would be several reports of these squids being found. But unfortunately, most of these reports failed to mention where the specimens were found or focused on the whales rather than the squids. But they provided valuable information that helps establish the existence of these guys. Then finally, in March of 1981, a new specimen made the others look like trash. Okay, not literally trash, but this time, they scored big. Eureka, a Soviet trawler otherwise called a spy ship, was operating in the Antarctic off of Drawning Maud Land, the territory claimed by Norway. In this area, they discovered a complete specimen with a mantle length of 2.42 meters, or 7.9 feet, total length being 5.1 meters, or 17 feet. They were at a depth of 750 to 770 meters, and the specimen they received was identified as an immature female. You know what that means? They weren't fully grown. That just goes to show that they really are as big as I said they were in the beginning of this video. She was a beauty. Well, she was also dead. But her contribution to the knowledge of colossal squids makes her a queen. Now, after this, several specimens and sightings occurred throughout time, but due to the high amount there are and the lack of evidence or descriptions of the claimed specimens, some of them will be left out of this video. The other colossus I will talk about will be discussed because they're considered more relevant or significant and have trustworthy sources compared to the others. So, the next special specimen that was found was a subadult female in March of 2003. Near the surface in the raw sea, she was found floating at the surface, and unfortunately she was already gone. Her body was recovered in three pieces, and she was donated to the Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tongriwa. She was examined and resembled together by Steve O'Shea and Kat Bolston, who measured her total length at around 5.4 meters, or 18 feet, with a mental length of 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet. She weighed about 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, and she was actually the one who inspired the common name we know as Colossal Squid, given by Steve O'Shea, a famous toothologist. Someone who studies cephalopods, not teeth. <laughs> so, I guess you would call her the OG Colossi. In the same year, a much smaller, immature female specimen would also be recovered between Macquarie and Stewart Island, about 260 kilometers south of New Zealand. But this entire specimen was pretty small compared to the other one I just covered, only about 0.9 meters when it was fresh. Still a complete specimen nonetheless. Well, that sure's a lot of specimen, huh? But guess what? We have even more to cover, so strap in and get some water! The next specimen was recovered June 25th in 2005. They were found and captured alive at a depth of 1,625 meters, or 5,331 feet while attempting to steal a Patagonian toothfish from a long line in South Georgian waters. Unfortunately, the guy was such a chonker they couldn't bring the entire thing on board. They had to leave the freaking mantle because it weighed too much. The total length was estimated around 2.5 meters, 8 feet and 3 inches, with the tentacles measuring 2.3 meters, 7 feet 7 inches, and the squid is thought to have weighed between 150 and 200 kilograms. 330 to 440 pounds. Little side note ramp, but I would have freaking called someone or something if the mantle was too heavy. I mean, this is a specimen that doesn't just pop out of the water every day. They couldn't have called their fisher buddies and been like, hey man, we got this rare squid, but he's heavy. Can you come and help us? Hey, <laughs> hey. And then the fairy couldn't come and help. They couldn't do that? Huh? No. Oh, okay, fine. 
That's fine, I guess. Whatever. Well, wait a minute. Five men, including the ship's scientific observer, attempted to bring the squid aboard. Okay, maybe I can see why they didn't bring the mantle then. But still, I would have been able to get it, I bet. The next specimen sighted after this was filmed and photographed January 8th, 2007, near the Ross Ice Shelf. But they weren't taken as a specimen. This was yet again a squid that was caught feeding on the fishing line of a boat targeting Patagonian toothfish. Since they weren't taken, their exact length isn't certain, but it was estimated that they were around 4.2 meters or 12 to 14 feet. With this, I determined the most effective way of catching Colossi. Just stick a net of toothfish in the ocean and bam, a squid will eventually reveal itself. Just kidding though, these guys are definitely better off without us interfering in their lives. But the last Colossi chonker I want to talk about is the biggest one they caught. This is the Chad Colossi squid, heaviest and largest we've ever seen. It was a female that was discovered in the Ross Sea in February 2007 by a fishing vessel called San Inspiring. While they were fishing for toothfish, I freaking told you, toothfish are the best way to catch the colossal squid. They placed it in a cargo net and brought it aboard using a crane, then gave it to the Tipapa Museum. At first, it was estimated that they weighed 450 kilograms, or 990 pounds. Its mantle length was reported to be 4 meters, 13 feet, and its total length was estimated to be around 8 to 10 meters, 26 to 33 feet long. After they were completely thawed, the specimen weighed 495 kilograms, 1,091 pounds. But unfortunately, their length only ended up measuring 2.5 meters, or 8.2 feet in mantle length, and 4.2 meters, 14 feet in total length. I know, I know. How the hell could something go from 26 to 33 feet to 14 feet, right? I mean, what the heck? Well, apparently they shrunk that much due to dehydration, with the long tentacles and eyes shrinking drastically post-mortem. The squid was kept in a freezer for 14 months, and this most likely caused the body to shrivel up. Look, I know you scientists did your best to preserve the body, but what the f man? We could have had a freaking giant squid just go see, but no. Now it's just a freaking 14 foot squid. Thanks a lot, freezer. You suck. But you know what? At least we learned that they get that big. And who knows, maybe the ones that are smart enough to stay in the very deep get even bigger. All I know is that colossal squids are freaking rad. I love you, Colossi. Will you marry me? Uh, oh, okay, never mind, I forgot your squid. But anyways, after that huge discovery and a dissection on a squid captured in 2014, the only other most recent squid discovered was a juvenile back in 2015. Can you believe that? After all these years, it still takes a long time for us to find them. Regardless, these guys are fascinating. Their lives in the deep sea are ones that we can't even begin to comprehend. Their evolved bodies that survive in these conditions make them a unique animal that seem more possible in sci-fi rather than the real world. And of course, it's great these guys are surviving in the world without having to worry about our effect on their population. But by gaining occasional specimens and learning about these creatures, we can appreciate the beautiful, mysterious world we live in just a bit more.